Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be doing a couple things. First off, we're going to go over what a Bezier curve is and how to implement it in Godot. We're going to be doing it in the debug extension static class that I already created in the previous video. And this video is going to be a pretty code heavy video, so let's go ahead and dive right in. Now, first off, I am going to go over a Bezier curve. I'm not going to go into too much depth. Freyer Holmer has already gone over this in what I would consider the gold standard for going over splines and Bezier curves. You can see their video here, either in the top right hand corner or in the description down below highly recommend if you care at all about this to go ahead and go look at that i'm just going to be giving you a working understanding of what a bezier curve is now before i do that however if you want to skip bezier curve implementation and just go straight to actually using it you can go to the timestamp here so what a bezier curve is is when you want to get from point a which is the origin here to point b which is the target here and you want to do it in a smooth manner using multiple points as control points to define what it should do bezier curves are kind of the go-to for splines that is the white line here that is a bezier curve so the way a bezier curve works is you have four points from the origin to its control point and the target and its control point you first do a linear interpolation and those are the little blue dots right here let's call them a, B, and C. Now between A and B, you do another linear interpolation, making sure to be in the same direction. And between B and C, you do another linear interpolation towards the target. And these are called D and E. And then finally, you just do one last linear interpolation between these two, all with the same linear interpolation value, and that results in F, which is the little white dot here. That is pretty much all a Bezier curve is, with a whole lot more steps added for all the different additions if you want to do a spline. But this will work pretty much as is for what we want to do for this tutorial. So we can go ahead and just delete that Bezier curve test. The code is there if you need it. It's called Bezier Editor Tester, and you can see it right here. It's just a bunch of debug information, but the real meat of it is in the debug extensions file. So right here, I've added two new static functions down here at the bottom. And the first one is called get Bezier curve position. And it takes a target position as well as a target control position and an origin position and an origin control position. And finally, a lerp value. Then all it does is exactly what I just described. It gets your A, B, C, D, E, and F. And it lerps between each one to get the next pair. So between the origin position, control, origin control, target, and target control, it gets A, B, and C. And then from those, it gets D and E from A and B and B and C respectively. And then finally, the F is just resolved from lerping between D and E. Really, it is just a bunch of lerp values. Now, also down here, you'll see the debug Bezier curve. All this does is take all of those variables and then it just iterates through it about 20 times and builds a line between each of those points to get you the white line that you just saw. And that's pretty much all there is to the Bezier curve. Now, I do want to go over how I'm doing data structure in Godot script. So in C Sharp, I had a object for the Bezier curve. And here you can see I have a new class for the Bezier curve. This is going to just contain all of the information required to get a Bezier curve position and then with a lerp returning where that position is using the debug extensions. Now there is one variable in this that you probably don't recognize and that's hit surface. This is going to determine whether the final target location in this Bezier curve is a object that the raycast has collided against. If it's not later on we're going to use physics to wave the hand around depending on what the situation is but for now it's not really going to be used for too much it's just going going to be used for the debugging sphere. Now, I did do one other thing. If you go over to limb placement control, you'll notice there is no limb reference anymore. Instead, we're using limb reference dot limb enum. And that's because I took that enum that I'd created here and actually broke it out to its own script. This way I can use it in other scripts. This is kind of a weird way to do it, but this is the only way to do what I want to do in Godot script. So we're going to do that moving forward, but everything else in limb controller is currently the same. Though we are going to have to modify it some. So let's go ahead and go through some of those modifications. First off, I do want a surface from this get target limb position function. So let's go ahead and do that. So first off, we're going to create a new variable called hit normal, and we're just going to assign that to vector 3.up. And if we have hit something, we'll just go ahead and assign the hit normal to the get collision normal from that. This is going to help us create those Bezier curves. Now we do need to factor it into that dictionary that's being returned. So we're just going to put that in as the hit normal in the dictionary. That should be pretty much it for the get target limb position, though we do need to factor in velocity. Now I've realized this after working with it for a little while that I do want to move the target limb positions out in front of the AI. So we pull in the velocity, but if we just take the linear velocity, it won't look very good. So let's go ahead and create a new variable. And that's going to be the velocity accounting multiplier. And so we can go ahead and modify the target 
target position by adding to it the linear velocity multiplied by the velocity accounting multiplier. I actually found that 0.5 works best on this. I may change it up later, but for the time being, it just needs to be about half what the velocity is. If it's too much, it just ends up moving way in front of the AI and it just doesn't look very good. Now we do need to go through a couple things here. We will need a new script called limb, and this is going to be for each individual limb. So we'll go ahead and create that and call it limb in the enemies folder. And let's go ahead and create a new class name for this. And we're just going to call that limb. That way we can use it in the limb placement controller. So right here, just above the velocity accounting multiplier, we can go ahead and create a new array. And we're going to call that array current limbs. This is going to be all of our limbs on each individual AI. Finally, we're going to go ahead and add in a minimum limb step delay. I put this to 0.15 because human beings, when they're running just on their legs, they get about three steps per second on average. And I figured I would double that for the fact that they are running on all fours. And that comes out to six steps per second, which comes out to a 0.15 between each step. And we're just going to iterate through each of the limbs and make sure that we offset each one. That way, all the limbs don't step off the ground at once. So let's go ahead and create a couple more variables. The first one is going to be the current limb step delay timer, and that's just going to be using to iterate through that delay. We are also going to have an index for the limb we're currently working on, and we're just going to iterate that each time. Now we can go ahead and go through a few things here. In the process function, let's go ahead and delete what we already have. And we're just gonna go ahead and iterate that current limb step delay timer. And if that delay timer is over the minimum limb step delay, we're just going to subtract that from the current timer. And right here is where we're actually gonna put the step, but we're not to that point yet. So let's just go ahead and skip over that. So the next step is to go ahead and iterate that index. And if the index is currently equal to the size of the limb array, then we're just going to set that index to zero. This way we loop through all of the limbs and then we reset back to zero and keep going. So let's go ahead and save this and we can hop over to limb and we have a fair bit we need to do. So first off, let's go ahead and create a new enum for which limb this is. And we're just going to use that limb reference limb enum. Next up, we're gonna create a central point control point offset. And this is just gonna be the distance along the normal axis that we're offsetting that control point, which I found about half a meter just feels pretty good then we're also going to have a blend speed float and this is going to be the speed at which we move through the linear interpolation which we may have to account for distance later on but for now it'll work just fine and finally we need a minimum movement distance the reason for this is we don't want it to be hopping around the feet a whole bunch when it's just moving a little bit so this will keep that from happening so let's go ahead and create a new variable for the current target location that's going to be wherever the ik wants to achieve and then also we do need a reference to the controller now it's going to throw an error here because we don't have the class name let's go ahead and throw that in the limb place controller as the class name. We'll just save that, hop back over to limb, and that error should clear up. Next up, we are going to need a variable that is going to be what the current lerp value is, as well as a variable that is the Boolean whether we're currently traveling or not. And lastly, we do need a reference to the current curve that we're traveling on. And because we set that out as its own object, it has its own functions and everything and is able to just be referenced like this. Now we do need to create a couple functions. First off, we need a function for when we're getting our first curve. And to do that, we're just going to pull the target data from the controller, and that'll be using the get target limb position function. And next up, we'll go Go ahead and create a new Bezier curve and you do that with the new keyword but we do have to assign all the variables so you'll notice the target position and origin position are the same because this is the initial curve we're just getting wherever the feet should start out so we're not worried at all about where they currently are so we pass in the target data of dot position for both of those as well as setting the control point to those positions plus the hit normal multiplied by the control point offset and then finally we also have the hit surface equal to the target data dot hit surface and lastly we just go ahead and return that curve now because because this is the initial curve, we can get away with this, but any subsequent curves, we are going to need a little bit more data. So let's go ahead and create a new function for that. And we'll just call this function get new curve. We're gonna go ahead and get the data in the exact same way. And then we're going to check to see if the current target location's distance to the target data dot position is greater than the minimum movement distance. And if so, we're gonna go ahead and create a new curve and return it. But notice here that the origin location is what the current target location is. Then for the control point on that, we go ahead and take the current target location and add to it the difference between the current curve's target location, the end result of that last curve, and the current curve's target location control. Now, the reason why we do this is because the arm might not actually be to the target location. This might have, for whatever reason, stopped an animation in the middle of its movement. So as a result, we do need its current location, not where it was destined to end up. Next up, we go ahead and set the target location 
to the new position of the target data, as well as its hit normal and control point offset with its hit surface being equal to the new target data. And we can just go ahead and return that new curve. And we do need to say if the current target location is not far enough away to actually warrant a step, we're going to return null. And then later on when we call this function, we're just gonna check to see if it's null. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and create the initialize step function. This will actually be called from the limb placement controller. It won't be actually called from limb.gd. So within this, we're gonna go ahead and create a new curve and we're going to use the get new curve function. And if that new curve does not equal null, then we're gonna go ahead and set the alert value to zero and the current traveling to true. And finally, we're gonna set the current curve to what the new curve is. Now we do need to modify the ready function here to get that initial curve. And that's gonna be as simple as setting current curve to get initial curve. And we're also gonna set the current target location equal to that target location from the curve. This just goes ahead and puts our feet on the ground. And lastly, in here, we are going to need to override the physics function. And first off, we're just going to go ahead and debug extensions dot draw point. We're just going to have this for the reference for where the foot currently is. And if we are currently traveling, then we do need to go ahead and iterate that alert value upwards by adding to it the blend speed multiplied by delta. And then we're just going to clamp this between zero and one so we don't get any odd behavior. And we're going to set the current target location to the current curve dot lerp, which once again is that function that we created within the Bezier curve. And all that does is just return debug extensions dot get Bezier curve position with all of the data within the Bezier curve object. And we're just gonna call that lerp function and set our current target location to that lerp function. Finally, we're gonna see if the current lerp value equals to one, that is we're at the end of our step. Then we're gonna go ahead and set the current lerp value to zero and we're gonna set the currently traveling to false. And this is just going to reset the entire process and get it ready for the next step. And this is pretty much it for limb. Now we do need to go through limb placement controller and set up a couple things. So first off, we do need to go ahead and set that step call. And we do this by taking the current limbs and then in brackets, use the current limb index, which is always between zero and whatever the size of the current limbs is, minus one. And then we call the dot initialize step on that limb. And that should be handling all the steps. Now we do need to set the controller within the ready function for each one of those limbs. So we're just gonna use a for loop through all of the limbs and we're gonna set that controller to self. Now we do need to set the controller within each one of those limbs. So we're just gonna use a for loop through all of the current limbs and set that controller to self. And that should be pretty much it. Let's hop back into Godot and we're gonna have to set up the limbs within the enemy test. So if we open up the enemy test ball here, we can set up a couple things. So first off, let's go ahead and create a child and we're just going to use the type limb. And we are going to need to go ahead and create four of these. And I'm just gonna rename all of them what their designations should be. Then I need to go ahead and set those enums. So we're gonna set it to right foot, left foot, right hand, and left hand. And finally, we do need to go ahead and set that control point offset. So let's set that to 0 0.5. Now in the limb placement controller, we can go ahead and initialize that array and add in four new elements. And we'll go ahead and drag in each one of the limbs for those elements. And that should be pretty much it. Let's go ahead and hop into the scene and see what it looks like. All right, and as you can see, each one of the steps is moving through the environment. And if we shoot it and knock it up against a wall, they move through the environment pretty smoothly and even go up against the wall. Now you'll notice a couple weird things specifically with them grabbing against thin air. This is due to it not knowing how to react when it doesn't have anything to grapple onto. So in the future, when we actually get to the biped, we're going to probably just apply physics to the arms using kind of an active ragdoll system to make it a attempt to get into a position, but we're not going to be too precise about it. And then when we actually have a position we want to grab onto, we're gonna go ahead and use full IK with no physics. That way it snaps onto the terrain. But for now, this will work just fine. Thank you all for the new subscribers. I, it really does mean a lot to me that everyone's finding all my series so interesting. But as always, thank you all for watching. I hope you all have a wonderful week and we'll see you all back here next week for the next tutorial.